Good evening, everyone. It's uh, Johnny Mac here, and uh, we have uh, we have another edition of Center Ice. Uh, uh, as always, uh, my co-host here, Brent Clemmer, and uh, we're real pleased to to, to have Rob Shrimp join us. Uh, um, Rob at a, a, a still in, in the middle of an amazing uh, journey in hockey, and we're gonna kind of kind of uh, talk about that. How are you guys tonight? How's it going, uh, Brent? Uh, pretty good. Been pretty sick all week, so uh, yeah. a little bit out of it here, uh, a little bit behind the scenes more tonight. But uh, yeah, getting there, getting a little bit better as we go on. And welcome, Rob. Uh, real pleased that you took the time to join us tonight. Um, real excited to kind of kind of pick your brain on uh, on, on uh, how how the hockey journey was for you. How are you? Doing great. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Yeah, no worries. No, anytime. So um, just, uh, you know, Rob has a, has a tremendous resume. One thing that when I've been promoting this show, uh, you know, this, this interview and, and I've said it and, and people have asked me about it. I, you know, I say, this guy's got the best hands I've ever seen, you know, but go to YouTube, go to Google, whatever you got to do. And, and, and they're like, really? And I said, yeah, yeah, really. And I, and, and I've seen Pat Kane and I've seen, um, you know, Pavel Datsuk. I saw you do some stuff over the course of your career when you were young and then when you were in junior and then when you were in the national hockey league. And then I've seen some video from Europe. And is this something that kind of came to you at a real early age that you, you realized that you were real gifted with the puck? Um, obviously hard work, but when did you realize that you, you had something special? Yeah, probably about a 10 year old year turning 11. I uh, hit like a big growth spurt, and then also kind of all came together. I, I did a lot of uh, shooting lessons with this guy named Donnie Kernan Jr. Uh, and that was like kind of my breakthrough. He taught, he's the best shooting coach I've ever seen in the world. And I've, you know, fortunate enough to be able to say that I played in the NHL, KHL, DEL, Swiss League, Swedish League. So I played against the Finnish League, all the leagues. And Donnie Kernan Jr. to this day has, has the best shot I've ever seen. So he taught me, my brother, when we were at the Fulton Ice Arena, Don Kernan and his dad bought the rink and he ran it. So, we were really fortunate. One day, my dad was watching this Donnie Kernan Jr. guy rip pucks, and he's like, "I need that guy to you know teach my kids." So, luckily for us, yeah. you know, twenty bucks a lesson right in our hometown, wow. and we had the best resource you could imagine. So, I just started learning from him, and I started picking it up. You know, over the course of whatever two months, three months, we were working together, and then kind of was like a combination between my lacrosse hands and my hockey hands meeting up and being able to then rifle the puck. I don't know. It just changed a lot for me because I played uh, just travel hockey at 10 years old, um, local stuff, you know, the typical travel hockey games. Most games were 30 minutes away, 40 minutes away. Right. We didn't really do big trips. We did one big yep. trip at the end of the year. I think it was the Buffalo tournament. I think it was, it was yep. a Pepsi tournament back then. It might've changed. There's probably a new name on it, but. I think we, we were there when that. I was, when I was coaching in Toronto, I believe that you know, we saw you there. Um, yeah, for sure. So Fulton, New York, uh, where you grew up, you know, upstate New York, um, Syracuse, Rochester, where, where, what would it be kind of, uh, I, I don't know the geography of it. Where, 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 where were we looking? Yeah. Uh, my hometown Fulton is 25 miles North of Syracuse. So Syracuse okay. was our you know, big city. So we, that's where, uh, eventually started playing triple A went played for Syracuse team and then the Syracuse stars. So that was, uh, yeah, that was my path was up there. That's very central, right? You get down to Adirondack. They had good programs. It's two hours away. Buffalo's, uh, Regals. There's a couple of West Seneca team, Rochester Americans. Like there was a good little racket. And then, you know, Ottawa is only you know, roughly two hours to the border for us to yep. Kingston. Ottawa's about three, but Kingston border is about an hour and a half, two hours. And then on the other side, you go to Niagara Falls. It's two and a half hours to get there and, you know, about four total to get to Toronto. So we had a lot of really good resource for competition. Once oh, we, absolutely. You know, we got absolutely. That's yeah. awesome. So well, I want to know one quick, quick question before we kind of move into the, the next segment here. Were you a Sabres fan growing up? Is that your, your, your uh, kind of, yeah. Dominic Hasek. Yeah. We used to, in that Pepsi tournament, we always, that was part of the shtick. Like when we went to that tournament, we always got to go to a Buffalo Sabres game. So it was, yeah. you know, Part of that, and they're looking forward to going to that. I can't say that I was a diehard. I don't want to pretend like I was a diehard, right. but I did. You know, I, I loved Hasek, and then as you know, I liked players. I liked Hasek. Then I liked Mike Richter and uh, Mark Messier were kind of like my early childhood idols. So uh, for sure, really well, a... ninety four, right? That ninety four team, you were yeah. a kid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, year, and that's really mask. That was the year I, so I, I came back, I finished playing overseas that year and I, I came back and I coached, I started coaching the 86 group the next okay. year in Toronto. 
So we had, yeah. you know, Stephen Ward and, 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 you know, obviously Boland and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, Bickle and Wolski, Bickle, you McGrath. know, the different guys coming through Evan McGrath. Yeah. Evan married, uh, Gilmore's daughter. Hey, did you know that? Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Yeah, he's yeah, now he's awesome. doing now uh, he's working with Niagara uh, Ice Dogs. He so, is, yeah, yeah. I saw that. That's awesome. So, what was in the water in upstate New York in the '90s to get two guys <laughs> like you and Pat Kane with the hands that you have? Yeah, Did I you don't know. Come you across know, what... him. I know he he's two years younger, right? Yeah, yeah. Did you guys uh, ever? Up, no, no, no. I was, I was 86 years. I was 11. That was my first year AAA, and then. When I was 12, I played against 14 and 15 year olds and then same at 13. And then at 14, I played tier two junior A. So yeah. I was kind of ahead of my class. I didn't really know the kids in my class in the younger ones either. So I was kind of really, yeah, like up with the older kids. Um, other than the select 15s at my birth year, that's the only time I got with that group was one, you know, one event. So I didn't, again, I didn't know the group that well. Uh, right. And then yeah, you missed him in London, that. of course, because you uh, you were gone, yeah. and he was he was with the national team development program, and then he came in with the year you guys left. So interesting, though, the two guys from from you know the same neck of the woods, and and yeah. you know we'll go down, and you know in my my hockey history, uh, you know, uh, unreal hands and 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 legends for sure. So um, uh, Eric and and Dave Herrock. Um, it's funny, a little six degrees of separation here. So I, uh, my son, my son, uh, is, is going to play with the, the team Quebec this year. Eric, Eric's the coach. Um, they yeah. got, they have a brick program. Jack's not eligible until next year. Um, so anyway, I'm sitting with Dave in Montreal last summer and, and, you know, we're, 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 we're talking and, you know, talking about each other. And I said, Oh, you know, I, I coached an 86 group in, uh, in, um, Toronto. And he said, well, my, my son is an 86 and, he said, do you know Shrimp? And I said, well, I didn't, I, I didn't know Shrimp. I coached against him. So I quite possibly could have coached against you guys. I don't, I don't remember. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, I, I, I got to know Rob a little bit when he played with Dave Bolin in London. So, um, so we talked about you and whatnot. So uh, anyway, how did it come that you, you ended up with that, that Quebec group? I don't even know, to be honest with you, that AAA year, uh, my 11 year old year, I scored like, I had like something around 350 goals and I was, I really went off with that. Like yeah. I said, to bring it back to Donnie Kernan Jr., I, I had like a man shot at 11. So yeah. I was scoring a ton of goals and I was getting really recognized. And it might have been somewhere along the lines we were at a tournament in Ottawa. And I think Dave was around and, um, or my name got to Dave. And they called and asked if we'd want to play in summer tournaments. I never played summer, summer hockey before that. So yeah, it was a pretty cool opportunity. I was really excited about it. And it was going, you know, it was kind of exotic uh, going up to Montreal, playing in Quebec. It was pretty cool. So. Uh, it was once they asked, we were like, yeah, we try, we'll give it a try. And we went up and it turned out the Harash family was like the most amazing people in the world. So yeah, Dave and Eric and Mark, they're all awesome. Um, they treated us great and uh, we, we loved it. So we did, we, we played for them as much as we possibly could at 12 and 13. And then I stopped kind of doing summer tournaments after that. So, but they were, yeah, great people. Eric was my line mate. We had a lot of fun nights in Montreal together, young boys running around just doing whatever, a little mischievous stuff, but yeah. Uh, it was a great group of guys too. We really got along great. All the kids got along. The parents got along. My dad was always up there barbecuing his, you know, on his smoker outside the rink with the Gallopoos and Augustine. So made lifelong friends out of that. You know, Dave, your dad, Dave provided your dad, Mark was a legend in London too. <laughs> yeah, he's with a legend his, everywhere. Dad. My dad's yeah. the best. Yeah. Drew Boland. No, Drew Boland speaks very, very highly of Mark Shrimp for sure. <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I remember having a couple with them, uh, you know, in the London days for sure. Um, so yeah. anyway, I'm talking to Eric and Dave, and I told them that we were going to have you on the show here for an interview. Um, and and they 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 wanted to talk wanted me to talk a little bit about your eating habits back uh, when you were you know 10, 11 years old. So what about him? Well, Dave said he said I've never seen anything like it. He said this kid. He said he showed up with a pack of raw hot dogs and ate yeah. them. True yeah. story. True story. Yeah. Yeah. Like a pack of 12, too. It wasn't That's like what a he pack said. of three. So, oh, yeah, and, then, and then Eric jumps in and he said, we We're 10 years old. We stopped at McDonald's. You're on a bus or in cars or whatever. But the team stopped at McDonald's, you know, 10 years old. And he yeah. said, Rob had two Big Mac combos. And then he was looking to, to see if anybody else was finishing their meals because, you know, he, he still would have eaten more. That's a lot of food for a 10-year-old, huh? 
I was scarred. I mean, I could burn it. It was amazing. I, I wish those days were still here, but yeah, I used to, I used to, I was big too for my age. So I was really like grown, like I grew four or five inches over a summer span. So I was like, yeah, I could eat. And that's what I, I mean. I even for another great story, but one time I got kicked off a team for eating the hot dogs, but yeah, there's two really? parts of it, right? The hot dogs were for a pack of 12. It was like two bucks. Right. It's pretty cheap, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it was filling. So, it, you know, it kind of had two purposes. Like, we didn't really have the money to buy flame and yawn as a 10 year old. Right. So, nope. or whatever. So we kind of got by, but it also became a thing. I mean, I started eating, I go out and score six goals. You'd start, you know, young age, you already start attaching that like positive to yep. something that had to be something right. I had 12 hot dogs. I've scored six goals. That's going to be my new model. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I ran this course, obviously eventually you can't eat that many hot dogs, but I did it for, for a little while. It's like six months. And That's one team funny. thought I was just like really undisciplined at 11 for eating these hot dogs. So they, they literally kicked me off the team for it. Um, they probably regretted that after the fact, huh? It was so, yeah, we wound up taking them down in a tournament a couple months later. So yeah. I, I went up having a hat trick against them. It was playing with passion. <laughs> kind of funny, too, just the fact that they kicked an 11 year old off a hockey team over hot dogs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was bizarre. It's not really the age where that kind of starts to matter no. yet. No, well, you wouldn't think, but you know what? Some of these guys, man, and that's what that's what made me comfortable about the decision to 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 send Jack up there. He had he had a bunch of options this year, and um, I really felt that you know when I spent some time with Dave, just exactly like you said, it's, it's like a family, right? You know, and and he the way that they speak about you now, and the way that you speak about them now you know, something special happened here. What, you know, 25, 27 years ago. And, you know, I'm hoping for the same for, for, for my young fella. Um, and the last story, and, and I think I was at this tournament. Um, I'm pretty sure we played against you here. It was in Kitchener, Ontario. Um, yeah. I think it was your 11 year old year. You came in on a goalie. You took a slap shot. And you, the, you ripped the glove right off the kid's hand, and, and literally the glove went flying. Okay, yeah. so that's that's remarkable enough. But then later in the game, you came in on him down the side again, wound up, and the kid stepped out of the net. Do you remember that? <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, I do remember that. That's a yeah, triple A goalie stepping out of the net. He didn't want Love it. it. Yeah, that's funny. Well, that's I mean that's that was Donnie Kernan Jr. really taught me that. I I figured it out figured it all out young and then uh like that was something that happened when i was 12 the peewee coach didn't want me to advance to band a major so they forced that i had to go to the peewee tryout so i said okay so we went to the peewee tryout and they had six goalies and by the time i hurt the fifth one he came over and asked me to stop shooting so hard <laughs> and then you know i kind of was a confident young kid and i said well that's you asked me to be here and then i'm not going to turn it down for anybody Kind of well, that's how I respond. So I was, yeah, I don't, you know, I didn't, not that I didn't like anybody there, but obviously like I wanted to play with the bigger challenge and older kids. So I had to prove a yeah. point, but my shot was, was pretty lethal. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, crazy, crazy. So then just kind of fast forward a couple of years, you're 14, you mentioned it earlier, you're 14 years old and, and you're playing in the, in the OPJHL. And then for our listeners, you know, some of the guys in the States and, 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 and in Western Canada, um, that's a good hockey league. There, there was a lot of guys. There, there was guys going going that route that could have been playing major A, and they're going in there to to, to look for an NC two A deal. Um, so you had some some top end players. You're 14 years old. That league went up to 20, and and it was a high level junior hockey. So in his 14 year old uh, year, your 14 year old year, 32 goals and 46 assists for 78 points as a 14 year old in junior high, and you know, it's, it's big boy hockey. That wasn't, uh, that wasn't, you know, they're not, they're not going, Oh, let's let the, 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 <laughs> the young guy go in and, and score. Right. Um, was your brother on that team with you that year? Yeah. My brother was on that team uh, both years I played there. So. Wow. Yeah, it was that was definitely special. Yeah, it was yeah. great. It was fun. We got to play a limited amount of games when I was tw uh, 12, I think, or 13, 12 or 13 when I played high school hockey, we played like 10 games together, but then, I had to make a choice between playing in the for the high school hockey team or going to Trinity D Quebec. Yeah, I, the high school hockey didn't think that it was uh, you know kind of permittable for me to miss three or four things when the other team, the older kids, and you know didn't get yeah. that opportunity. So then I I chose to go to uh, Trinity D Quebec, obviously. But yeah, then we got to play together in junior, stayed home. So I mean, I was, it was a really high level league. So Don Kerner brought that yeah. there. So he had such a big impact on 
the Syracuse area and the growth of hockey. It's, it's got a big footprint there. So, but yeah, bringing the junior, junior team, it used to be the Metro League first. And like that's, I saw that league when I was 11 years old. And that was yeah. when Quinny Hawks were like clearing the benches all the time. Like they had a yeah. bench clear in Syracuse. It was absolute mayhem. And I remember being an 11 year old boy being like, you know, it's pretty intimidating. <laughs> it was pretty wild. I played so, in that league. So I played for Wexford Raiders in uh, Wexford, 1980, yeah. 1987, 88. And, and we would, um, we would, we'd sell out Scarborough arena gardens on a Sunday night and everybody's drunk. St. Mike's would come in and the cops would be called or Henry Carr would come in. There'd be, you know, line brawls, every stoppage of play. And you knew who yeah. you were going to fight before the, for the game. And yeah, it was, it, there was a lot of, a lot of big guys played in that, uh, at that level. And, uh, and, and for you to do it at 14, man, you, the only other guy I know that played in that league and I played against him when he was 14 is Eric Lindros. And, oh, and really? he was a, he was a man boy, right? He was, yeah. you know, six foot three, 210 pounds at 14 years old. Um, you know, but, uh, was, he's the only one I ever, I have ever heard of that, that, you know, there's guys that have played, but you played like, you, you know, you had, <laughs> you had, uh, a couple points a game and, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, contributed, uh, you know, at a high level. So, uh, you know, good on you for that. So now you get into the OHL draft. And I remember this draft very, very closely because at this point I, I was working with, with David quite a bit. We would, uh, you know, we, he would, he would help me on, on some of my camps and, and I would constantly, you know, work on a stride or, a, you know, a, an edge work or something like that with him. So, so we watched it, we watched him play in the OHL cup. So he, uh, Funny quick story. He he. They were playing against Oakville. Remember the Donati boys, uh, Justin and Tyler, yeah. uh, two Tyler twins. So, yeah. So they were they were the big guns for Oakville. And then there was Jordan Morrison, David, um, I think Evan McGrath. They had they had a real good team, the Toronto Red Wings at that point. I'm not coaching anymore. Um, I, I, there I was in Guelph at the time, and he ended up. Uh, I think he had eight or nine goals in the round robin, no helpers, right? So the, him and his dad drew call me on the way to the game. And they're like, Oh, you know, do you have anything, any advice for David going into the game? And you know what I said? I said, pass the fucking puck. I said, they think yeah. that you're a hot puck hog. I said, this is a draft showcase. I said, pass, you know, feed the puck. So what's he do? He goes, he goes out in the final. I think he had five helpers, no goal, <laughs> five helpers. And they, and they beat Oakville win the OHL cup. He goes eight overall that year. You go one overall. And there was a little bit. So there was you and a guy named, is it Wes O'Neill? Yeah. Remember Wes O'Neill? Yeah. He was a big, big defenseman and stuff. And I remember yeah. there was, it wasn't much of a debate, but, you know, people, oh, what's, what's Mississauga going to do? There's uh, always a debate. There's yeah. always, it doesn't matter if there should be or not. There's always a debate. You look at it, yeah. even the NHL draft, somebody will argue that Bedard shouldn't go first overall. It'll happen. Right. So Don Cherry drafts you, which, you know, you know, Mississauga Ice Dogs, I think it was, was, they had maybe two years already at that point. They weren't around that very long at that point, were they? Year or Second two? or third year. Yeah, they, I think yeah. they started in 01, and then this would have been 02, 03. Yeah, and Pat O'Sullivan was there, right? Yep. Another he American kid. He was their first pick of the first year, yeah. So yeah. anyway, you go in there. I, I want to ask you about this because I know a guy, he coached in the National Hockey League, you remember Jeff Ward? He he coached in Calgary yeah. a little while ago, and he's been an assistant forever. Yep. Anyway, Jeff told me when he went, he coached there for I think about twenty games. He said every single intermission, Grapes was outside the door. Play this guy, don't play that guy. That guy's getting too much ice. You got to do this. You got to. He just finally he gave him a couple warnings, and he said, "You know what, Grapes? He said, I, you know, you hired me to coach this team. If I'm going to coach them, was that happening when you were there?" No, not at all. Steve bit. Ludzik was in charge. No. Wow, no. that's a little different. Yeah, Ludzik's not going to allow yeah. that, right? Yeah, no, Ludzik was amazing. So, And then Don was only coming down um, once in a while. He'd walk by and say hi, really, and just have a conversation with some of us. I think it was more cool for us to talk to him, you know, and I think right. he realized that. So nothing of that, those sorts. That, yeah, definitely not. Ludzik ran, ran a tight ship and – you know, not too many yeah. chefs in the, in the kitchen, so to speak. And um, he, Ludzie was awesome. So, that's, yeah. Well, that and a, he was so was well respected and still is, right? Like it, the, the yeah. you know, the health problems that he's had and, and you know, just the outpouring uh, support from the hockey community every at every level has been tremendous yeah. for him along the way, for sure. 
Um, so where was I going here? So then you get traded to London. Kyle Quincy went the other way. Real good defense. Yeah, Chris, Chris Didn't he Bain, end up back Kyle in London, though? Did no, he end up back no, no. with he you? Finished, no. He finished his career in, in uh, Mississauga. And then okay, went on to Brooklyn. Yeah. I remember him and yeah, he's Detroit. He was a he played had a pretty good uh pretty good career. Five, six, eight, um, eight, something like that. So that wasn't it wasn't a wasn't a bad uh, situation to fall into the London Knights, eh, at that point. <laughs> pretty uh yeah. pretty good uh group and the hunters, I mean, you know, legendary uh legendary players and and even more legendary kind of owners and managers and um you know everybody that I've talked to that 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 played there since they kind of took that franchise over has had nothing but, you know, it, 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 these guys treat, treated you guys like they were, you were, you were their kids, right? They looked out for you. They, you know, um, you know, what, what was your overall experience, you know, coming into London? How did you feel? Yeah, it was, it was different, you know, coming from Mississauga, right? There's no, like, take the organizational side out of it. So the first year was great with Ludzie and uh, the staff there. Um, Red Crawford was awesome. Great guy. This guy could come down. He's left-handed shot, switch to right-handed, snap it, right-handed bar down like nothing. It was, it was really? sick to watch. Yeah. He was our assistant coach. So he was, uh, it was a great group, but outside of that, you know, like the hockey, you go into JLC, it's 10,000 fans. It's packed. It's, you know, say pressure, but with good pressure, like that's, but it's a bit of a shock when you play 34 home games the year before you added them up you probably got about 12,000 fans total, right? Yeah. So, you know, that that first was nice. It was great. And that's – I remember seeing it in preseason. Bulls is the one that got me to come there. Really, I was I was having some issues in Mississauga and wanted out. And I, we played against London in an exhibition game. And before the game, I always used to go out on the ice in my shoes and whatever, do my thing. And Bulls, he was out there, and he's like, man, you got to – you know, the rumors were obviously circling the league. He's like, you got to come here. It's amazing. The fans are amazing. The team's sick. So – uh, you know, I had a list, very short list of four teams, and that really kind of catapulted London. So then when he got there, it was it was great. You know, big lights. You know, time to perform, be more of a pro, and 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 again, like that. That's like a pro atmosphere. That's why it's it's so. Uh, I mean, everybody wants to come here because it is like a mini NHL. Really, you get the fan base, you got the pressure of winning, you got the guidance of winning. Yeah, I mean, Dale just won his 900th game, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's crazy. probably the biggest thing you take away from playing here is, is you learn how to win. Um, and it's that's a great education, lots of things. I mean, there's other things as well, but I think that's probably the, the biggest one that sticks out to me is that <clears throat> competitiveness and making decisions and making moves that are, are for you know, strategy and to win. And again, it's not the proof is in the pudding with the numbers, right? 900 wins is that's you can't have 900 flukes, <laughs> you know? No. So, no. Yeah, he's you know if you look at what they've done, so so junior hockey traditionally is very cyclical, right? You've got you'll have a team and they'll be real competitive for two or three years, and then you know they got to maybe maybe you know sell some draft picks to 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 beef up for a Memorial Cup run or a you know an OHL or Q or whatever, and then and then they got to rebuild. Then they're kind of down, and they you know you, you, you three or four years are good, then a little bit of pain. There's not too many franchises that sustain. Uh, well, there's nobody that sustains like London. I can think of Halifax here has a pretty good program, similar, sell it out. And it, it you know, the fans, but people think, oh, they can just buy their players. If this is junior hockey. You can't buy players, right? You can, you can set up a good situation for players that, that make them want to come there. Um, but, but you, you know, you get the same amount of draft picks as the guy next to you. Right. You just have to have to, you know, foster a good environment and, and have them in a situation where they're going to succeed. And they just keep doing it over and over. And it, over. It, it's the development, too. They, they yeah. pick the right kids and then they develop them. There's I mean, when it comes to junior hockey, you're getting a bunch of unknowns. It doesn't matter how highly you're touted coming out of triple A. It's it, yep. if you don't get developed because it, it's a big jump from triple A to the OHL. It, it's not really comparable in skill at all. I did say it's actually probably a smaller, a bigger jump than from going from the OHL to pro. So, yeah, that... oh, well, for sure, for sure. So I drew bowl and sometimes less, I'm sure he'll be listening tonight. And, and I can remember a kind, I don't know if he'll remember this. So it was, uh, you weren't in London yet, but uh, um, they're playing, uh, they're playing in Guelph. I lived in Guelph. So Drew calls and says, Hey, you know, David's playing in Guelph tonight. Do you, you know, would you want to come to the game with us? Yeah, I'd love to. So, you know, we go down and, and, and we're having a beer and we're watching. So he's a rookie. 
right? David David's a rookie, eighth overall pick, right? Pretty 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 damn good, top ten. Um, anyway, he doesn't get a shift, okay? And and Drew is losing his mind. He's like this. <laughs> You like, how can he not play him? Well, and I said, Drew, it's the process. I said, I said, they're teaching him how to be, be a, a real hockey player. This isn't, you know, minor hockey anymore. Back off. I said, you know what? This is, this is learning, right? You got to learn how to sit on the bench. And when, and, and when you do that the right way and then work harder in practice, uh, you know, you're going to get your shot, right? Oh, he was ready to, I'm calling him Hunter. I'm calling. I said, no, 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 no. Worst thing you can do is call Hunter. Right? <laughs> Worst yeah. thing you can do. I said, just go with this process. And David would have told him the same thing. David got it. And, you know, Drew, uh, you know, he's passionate. I'd be the same way if it was my kid and you'd be the same. We'd all be the same way. But uh, I remember that story. And, and, and that's what they did. They didn't care who you are. You come in and yeah. you're going to learn how to be, you know, a pro when you're 16 years old. And that's the advantage that they have. By the time you, you guys are 18, 19, nobody's going to beat you. I mean, you, yeah. you took down Crosby in the final of the Memorial Cup, and he did he get a shot on goal? I know he had, he had no point. Four and nothing, wasn't it? Yeah. No, we shut him down completely. So the first game yeah. he did, which was insane, uh, yeah. we were down 3 nothing 10 minutes into the game, and he had three unbelievable plays. And right. there wasn't many cracks in our lineup. So the, the, the plays that he made were individually in, it, it just crazy, like off the charts. To, yeah. He took on – remember the one play? He came down the right wing. And Mark Mathot crossed over and went to like drive into the boards. He just literally stopped Mathot with his weight transfer, leaned into yeah. him, held the puck with one hand, one hand sauced it across the ice, like eight inches wow. off the ice. Right on Mark on Twapuli at stick goal. Yeah. And we're all wow. looking at the bench like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, whoa. That's like nobody could do that to try. Nobody did that to the team. And what do you do <laughs> when you're defending that? What do you do? Nothing. Exactly. You put it on video, do. there's nobody wrong, right? If you watch it on video, there wouldn't be any – nobody's in trouble. No. <laughs> nobody missed their man. Yeah. Trotter tried to be physical. The other guy was pretty covered. There was a stick between them. And he one-hand sauces it. It's just, it was not – It was he was on a different level for sure. So some of the guys you played with here in London, um, Dylan Hunter – um, I know Bowley, Bowlesy and him are real close. Um, they've been buddies, since, you know, ever since. Um, he got drafted by Buffalo, I think, and just kind of never, never transitioned to the pro game. He's coaching with uh, um, with his dad now, right? He, he's on the bench. Yeah. Do you think the plan Definitely. is for him to take it over? Is Dale going to step back at one point, or what do you think? I have no idea, to be honest with you. Uh, I know yeah. Dylan's doing a lot of stuff in the background as far as. Hockey Canada stuff, getting his education on the, you know, that side of it and yeah, getting good. his experience. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that's it's pretty obvious to say that that would probably be the path. <laughs> Down the road, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's For learning sure. right now, so I don't see why not. I just yeah. don't know. Corey really. Perry. Corey Perry is a teammate. Yeah. Corey Perry has a teammate? Yeah. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah, he's such a competitor. That's why he's loved everywhere he goes. Um, and hate it if you play against him, though. Right. Everybody, Everybody hates to play hates. against him. He's competitive as hell. Do whatever it takes to win. Do whatever it takes to, you know, in the offensive zone. He's just his biggest. His biggest thing is his instinct for the net and how to attack the net. He's always attacking the net, whether it's a pain in the ass to the goalie, whether it's a successful <laughs> try. He's trying to wrap it around, spears the goalie, gets up, accidentally knees him in the head. Like he's just not. He's nonstop, like attacking the net, threatening the net, and whatever he can to the net. You know, even now he's. A little bit older, so his role is a little bit different. He's not the half wall guy, or we sometimes a lot of times he's a net front guy, but he's he does a hell of a job at it because he's such a competitor. He's not perfect at it, but he figures that he figured it out. I remember watching a game, and I think you were in it. I, I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't the it, so Mike Richards was the captain of uh of Kitchener, and uh, and and Corey, of course, and in uh, was with you guys in London, and and the game ended or the regular time ended or something. Big scrum game it's a playoff game i remember it clearly and it was in kitchener and there's a big scrum in the corner and then all of a sudden <laughs> richie and pairs quote to center ice buckets off and just trade just throw the you know the best players on e on either team at that time mm -hmm. you know they, they they were both known as you know they're, they're they could handle themselves tough guy but do you remember that were you playing that night oh yeah was that yeah it was, it was actually not to correct, but it was in London because it happened in Kitchener actually the game before. The same scenario yeah. happened. It was a big melee at the end of the game. And then Richie was like, 
he's just bullying Paris. Like, and it's stupid. Like, the game's over. Paris is you know, our best player. Exactly. We don't need him to fight, right? Yeah. So, Paris is like, F off kind of thing. F off. Yeah. And then go and catch. And then he, Richie did that. Honestly, it was identical. He started just raking on him in the corner with cross checks. Then, you know, rabbit punches in the head. And finally, Paris is like, let's go. It was yeah. sick. It was, that was, that right? that was cool. Yeah. World junior teammates. Both yeah. respected as, like you said, the, you know, the leaders of their team, best players on the team couple Canadian boys and it was like, let's go. Like you got you want to play around. And then Paris, in my opinion, obviously it's biased, but it got the better of the exchange. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um it so the prospects big... game, your draft year, the prospects games in London. Right? And the ad dog. Yeah. And I think that was all because it was in London, I think that that turned into so so prior to that it was done in Toronto. Um, and, and it was always in Toronto and it wasn't really a thing, right? Because it's not a, not a junior market really as, as well documented when we talked about Mississauga. So they, they'd have it in Toronto and they, they'd sell tickets, but, but when it went to London that year and you guys had yourself and David and, uh, um, was there anybody, anybody else go that year? Anybody, any, no, other just David and yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, it's a big deal. And I can remember, I, I spent a couple days in London, um, uh, that there was, uh, you know, some skills stuff that you guys did prior to. Um, but you scooped the puck in the game, didn't you? Didn't you come in and do a lacrosse move? I, I, I Was it in the game or a skills thing? Because you know who I was sitting beside? I was sitting beside Doug McLean, who was a GM of, uh, of Columbus at the time. And, of course, he, he, had a, he, had a, he had a pretty high pick. I think he had third or fourth pick that year. And uh, yeah. he, he, he was, I can remember him looking at the guy beside him and going, what the hell just happened? You came over the line, picked it up, dude, dude. And I, and I, and if I remember correctly, you, you, you whipped it and it, and it kind of crossbar and up into the mesh. And we were kind of right behind there. And it was, was that in the game? Yeah. I was like walking, I was walking out of the corner. I was at the top of the circles and then the guy got in my way. So I did it. I picked it up and I did a spinorama and I just, just flew it wide, just wider than that. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's like, what just happened? Yeah. That was yeah, quite it, an it experience. Like, I felt that kind of like stunned feeling more than like, yeah, it was probably different for people to see. <laughs> for sure. No, that was uh, that was a good time. So, and then um, I think this would have been the last time I saw you. Cause I, I uh, went down to the States not long after that. But uh, it would have been uh, 03, 04, so the, the year before the, the the Memorial Cup run. And do you remember we, uh, they, they retired Brendan Shanahan's number? And, yeah. and there was a big uh, ceremony for Brendan Shanahan. So, of course, Shanahan and Bolin being, you know, Mimico boys, the Blue Goose. And, you know, so Drew calls me up. And I'm living in Guelph. And I had a bunch of buddies. And Drew calls me up. He says, we got a bus. We got a bus. We're, we're, we're leaving the Blue Goose. He says, we'll pick you guys up in, in, in Guelph on the way. And I go, oh, yeah, no problem. I said, you know, and he goes, we got a box. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be nuts. So anyway, I had a buddy that was a Sleeman's rep, a Sleeman Brewery in Guelph. So I said to him, hey, do you want to go? He goes, yeah. He said, I'll get all the beer. Tell them no, no, no worries. Well, you know, so they pull into the Tim Hortons right off Highway 6 in Guelph, this, this bus. Right. With all these guys and some of the Mimico guys. Yeah. I mean, just beauties, right? Legends. So this <laughs> oh nuts. So That's we're the piling these, piling these two fours onto the bus. And and you know, the guys we had to stop in Woodstock to get yeah. more. Right. No That's way. how it was, right? Yeah. So we pulled in and we went up, and then they started yelling Shanny, Shanny, and and Brendan was in with us and his family. And and uh, you know, and then and then David stripped a, a D to D pass in overtime. It was Guelph. And they and he stripped a D to D pass in overtime, went and scored in, you know, on Shanny night. So that would have been the last. I remember seeing you after the game that night. Um, but uh, and then of course the Memorial Cup, we talked about that. Um, I, how was the Cancun trip after the Memorial Cup? Which trip is that? Cancun. Where? Didn't you in guys Mexico? all go to Cancun right after? Yeah, Mexico. Oh yeah, yeah, we did. Yeah, after after the Mem Cup, yeah, it was, it was great. We have a big group of us went down. It was awesome. Yeah, it was yeah. Uh, an extension of of the parade. I mean, we didn't realize yeah. the parade was going to be what it was. You know, we didn't know what that was. We you know it's obviously important to the city. We got a chance to feel that all year, and then in the playoffs and even Mem Cup, blah blah blah. But, it was like eight or 10 of us went golfing on the day of the parade. We, we just thought it was going to be, I don't know. 
I don't know what we expected, but you know, we uh, we had some fun on the course in the morning. We showed up to the parade. And the city was just lined. We're like, oh crap! <laughs> like so much of shit. What did we get into here? But it was electric, and it was great. After we had to head down as a group down there, it was, it was a lot of fun. So you know, it was a great team bond and celebrate what we just did. It was a long year of focus, you know. So it was good to look, that was over. We succeeded in what we wanted to do. So the celebration was just. I don't think you were one of them, but I think I was supposed to have. So I was in uh, in Arizona, and I had a hockey camp that summer, and I had definitely Perry, Boland, and I don't know if it was, it was either you or Dylan. And by the time, and it was right. That, so you guys didn't know you were going to Cancun or anything like that. So. The boys were supposed to come in only and it ended up only being David. <laughs> he said, everybody's banged up, man. They, you know, that was fine. We, you know, we had, you know, some, some, some local kids, but uh, yeah, I heard yeah. that it was a pretty good time. I have, I have a stick uh, signed by the whole team that David brought me um, nice. down, down on that trip. So I got, I got, that's, uh, that's you know, put away safe. It's uh, um, you know, something that's, that's pretty special. I, in my opinion, it's best junior team of all time. Um, right there. I don't think, uh, you know, I, I know the record was there, but just, you know, if you look at, at what they accomplished, right. It, it was huge. Um, all right. So let's get into the NHL now. So you get drafted Edmonton 25, um, overall, um, you go there and somebody asked me about this the other night and, and, you know, we were talking about you and how you, uh, how you're coming in, um, you know, to that situation. And, and I kind of used an analogy. I said, you know, guys go into different situations and, and, and sometimes it's not even about them, whether they're going to, going to succeed or not. It depends on the situation. Some guys get real lucky where they go, like Bolin, you know, goes into that situation in Chicago. I think Edmonton was a, was a little bit of a, 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 an old boys club, a little bit of a shit show there. And, you know, if you were in with the right guys, you, you know, you got opportunities and if you didn't, you didn't is, is, you know, what describe to us how it was like when you when you when you went in uh you know coming off a of 160 points or something like that you had highly touted world juniors you come in how was it going in there in your first year oh uh, yeah it didn't seem like there definitely wasn't red carpet out <laughs> so there's you know it didn't it wasn't going to be easy and um uh, you know it's it was going to be a climb for sure. And that was really made it made obvious out of the gate, which, you know, some parts you can say that's good for you. Uh, I guess at 36 now we retired from playing. I can, you know, I can see the silver linings in it at the time, pretty frustrating, uh, pretty yeah. dark in the sense of not knowing, you know, not seeing the light, not seeing the path or the plan. Uh, it's pretty kind of dark, you know, I just, yeah. And going from, like you said, in junior, I was really successful and, and you know, it's, guys that we played in the same league together with, you know, that 30 points, 40 points less than I did. We're going in and getting like really good chances. It's kind of like we came from the same league and I did, you know, I think I have a lot of ability. So it was a bit frustrating, you know, and then again, like it was great for David, but you see your, you know, one of your best buddies is going in and again, uh, different path, right. Different organization. So um, yeah, it was tough to be honest with you, but it is what it is. And, you know, Life goes yeah, on. for sure. And then, you know, you obviously you, then you, you, you're in the minors a bit and you end up in New York. Well, Jesse has a question here, Rob, how did you adapt to life as a, as a pro player? And, and I think part of that is, you know, you're, you're coming out of a pretty good pro situation, but what changed um, from the, from the London Knights to, you know, whether it's the national hockey league or the American hockey league that year that you're, you're finally, you're, you're, you're getting paid to play. Um, what changed? How, how did that, uh, how did that go? So going to pro, I mean, it's it's just totally different. The urgency in the game, uh, the guy schedule is crazy for one. A um, lot of travel, a lot of three and threes, ton of games, and then the you know the desperation and urgency that guys play with at that pro level is just totally different than junior, right? Um, you're just a bunch of boys in junior, just doing it for the beauties and for the boys and that junior lingo, and then you go to pro and it's like guys are eating pucks with their face for their family and their kids, so. It yep. just totally changes and the seriousness kicks, you know, it gets kicked up really fast. Um, you know, it becomes a job. <laughs> it's a, yeah, you get it the faster you can realize that, the quicker you kind of uh, can figure it out, so to speak, and, and start building towards, you know, again, in junior, you're just living for the day, like literally that day or that hour. Um, yep. There's no big plan. <clears throat> Pro, you got to map it out. So it gets serious real quick. And again, that the urgency in the game. And then, yeah, like I think Jess's question too, the, 
credit card game, the, the first one of those always hurts. <laughs> it always hurts a lot. If you get hit with one of those or the rookie dinner really is uh that's a nice kick in the face as well to realize what kind of money you're dealing with. <laughs> so, Oh yeah, absolutely. So yeah, I, that's right. Real, real yeah. They, they like to run up the bill on you guys. That's yeah. <laughs> no question. That so I asked this to every guest that we bring on that <clears throat> has played in the NHL has played high level pro. Uh, what was your welcome to the show moment? What, what, what was it? Um, obviously guys have different ones, whether it's even just being at the airport and having people recognize who you're getting into a car with or something the vet says to you, something that maybe you get rocked in your first shift, that kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know if it's anywhere in that realm, but we were down in Dallas and we were walking out to the ice. We weren't even ready. You're anywhere near the ice yet. And then Corey Cross like punches me in the back and I turn around. He's like, Hey, stay effing focused. I was like, okay. Like, man, like, <laughs> So we keep walking out, we get out the door, and there's, then there's six cheerleaders on each side that are very beautiful women. And he smacks <laughs> me in the back of the head and he goes, I said stay focused. <laughs> so I was like, oh, it makes sense now. But I don't know if that's a you know, story you're looking for. But it was kind of funny. I had no idea where he was going with that. You know, Well, no, that, that's why I like that question because guys have so yeah. many different versions of yeah. what theirs is and like kind of that it's your welcome to the show moment. It has nothing to do with what I'm trying to draw out of you. I was just kind of curious. Yeah. Awesome. yeah you know, Dallas is a, has beautiful scenery. So uh, that was a, that was my first experiment with it. So yeah. yeah Corey, no good. Thanks. Right on. <laughs> so you end up on long Island and that's JT's yeah. rookie year, right? John Tavares gets drafted yeah. 18 yeah. and he comes in. How was he? So, so he, um, if he's he's got a lot of comparisons to to um uh johnny pays right just kind of very serious you know very mature at a young age what, what did, did you notice that right away with him could you tell or was it something that you had to be around a little bit yeah he's really quiet really focused you know really introverted so very focused on his game and you know he put a lot of work in after the practices you know doing little stuff stick, stick handle and drills with a lot of different you know things so, so he worked really hard at the game and he took it really serious at a young age there was also a lot of pressure on him at a young age so yeah that's you know no easy feat whether you go back to 14 or 15 and you know double underager and yeah and then you get it at the first overall and you know the minutes that he was playing in his first year uh, i think it's a little bit different when not to put him in the same boat, but kind of Crosby comes in the league and he's playing with Mario and, and Lang. And, you know, there's like a lot of support there, you know, yeah. JT didn't come in and jump on a line with, you know, with that, you know, Kaner and Taves came in at the same time. There's a lot, that, that's a pretty good support beam, right. And there's a bunch of other really good players on Chicago. Yeah. So Johnny came into a little bit of a tough situation where there, there wasn't much support. So um, a lot of pressure on him and, and, you know, he handled it pretty well for the most part. There was there was a time in the season where he kind of he had a slump and it was tough for him and frustrating. I don't think he ever had a slump since he was probably ten years old. So, uh, all right. with all that pressure and stuff, it was it was difficult. So, but he he handled it well. Again, he's just very quiet, very focused. Yeah, and it's kind of it's 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 kind of uh, you know sad that you know five or six years now after he he signed as a free agent in Toronto, they still boo him. They're they, every time he touches the puck, they're on him. Pretty rabid fan base, right? How did you how did you like the situation playing for the New York Islanders compared to playing for the Edmonton Oilers at that point? Uh, to be honest, you know, in direct, I just enjoyed playing. <laughs> yeah, I didn't play those three years. I played seven games, so yeah, I didn't really know what it was like to play in the NHL, what that meant, how that felt, um, how to you know kind of manage it. So yeah. my first first year in Long Island, it just felt good to be there every day and not sitting in the minors in the dark, riding on a bus, yeah. eating a shitty, soggy sub in Binghamton. Eating raw hot dogs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. Oh, my God. They should have yeah. went back to that. Um, yeah. yeah, so it was just really good. It was a lot of pressure off in some regard. We still had a lot to yeah. go. Like, man, I got there, and they told me that you're going to have to wait for somebody to get injured or play themselves out of the lineup. So I got a healthy scratch for, like, I don't know, somewhere around 15 to 17 games straight. Yeah. Um, so it was – it was still a grind, but I had a different perspective, different view on it and different appreciation. So I just worked my ass off and waited and made sure I made the guys were always laughing when they're around me in the locker room. I'd never really, uh, you know, I didn't want anybody to give me that pity kind of shit. Just, I wanted to be one of the boys. And whenever my turn came, 
you know, it would come and then it finally did. And, and everybody was really happy for me instead of like, you know, right. You know what I'm saying so everybody was pulling for me. You can see my first goal celebration. I was blow up Mark Strait's back. So guys were genuinely excited about my first goal with me. And uh, yeah, it was different, different perspective. Yeah. And that's, you know, good on you to, to kind of persevere like that. So, so then you end up in Atlanta and Atlanta, it was, that's an interesting situation because, you know, I looked at the lineup today, I looked at hockey DB and, and so uh, Chicago had just won the cup. Right. And, and all of a sudden they traded lad buff and eager all to, to Atlanta. Right. Yeah. As a salary dump. same thing that they did with David after the 13 cup. Um, those were, were, were three, uh, three beauties to play. Lad was, the say he was a second or third overall pick that year, wasn't he? Carolina uh, in yeah. your draft year, fourth, yeah, maybe yeah. fourth. Yeah, he was fourth. Yeah, he, then, uh, yeah, he was. He was right up there. He was a good, uh, good junior. He was good. I, I was. A, he was. He was my linemate at that prospects game. It was him and Blake Como. Yeah. So it was actually I like Ladder a lot. He's a really solid dude. He's a great, you know, great leader, great guy. But even as we were kids at that, you could tell us like just a good dude, good Western boy. Um, yeah. Mild and manner. how did you like Atlanta? It was it was good. It, you know, it was it was exciting when I got there. We were in a playoff position. We we're fighting two points out, and then that slipped really quick. Like over the span of like two weeks, we dropped like six or six or eight points. We were no longer there, so a little bit weird. Um, it was a good group of guys. It was great. It was just, just it's such a short time. You know, I got I was there for three months, eighteen games or something. Then. You know, with the first part when I got there fighting for a spot, they were kind of going with their own. I didn't play a ton. So once we kind of got deeper down, I got a chance to play with Kane and uh, Antropov. And we were we were playing really good, you know, dominating yeah. NHL games in some regard. Like whenever we were on for our time, we were yeah. always in the offensive zone buzzing. So that felt good to, you know, have some chemistry there and, and start building. Um, then it, it just came to an abrupt end, you know, like. Uh, season was over. We got a text from Andrew Ladd in like June 1st. It was like, hey, boys, get your parkas ready. Uh, we're going to be moving to Winnipeg. So that was like, a, I was like, whoa, boy. Yeah, I kind of saw that. <laughs> and then they fired all the staff. You know, Rick Dudley was a guy that had known me a long time and, and really believed in my Buffalo game. guy, so yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, they, they let him go. And as soon as they let him go, I kind of, yeah, for me, it was like, oh, that, I, yeah. I would have had somebody in my corner for, for once. Uh, right. Which would have been. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it, you know, you could probably compare the situation in Winnipeg to Edmonton, right? Cold and, uh, you know, you know, you <laughs> flash back to, yeah. to that, right? And Earl question about that. Were, were you surprised that, like, that text came through and you guys were going to Winnipeg? Like, that was, that must have been kind of like a culture shock a little bit to an extent, just hearing that alone, because I imagine the fan base was kind of fun in Atlanta. Well, it was empty, so we didn't have much. So that in that regard, you, no, not surprising at all. But in all the right. fact that I was there for three or four months, I didn't hear a word about it. Like I had no idea that this was even, I don't know, maybe I was naive and didn't read anything, but I didn't see anything about relocation. I didn't hear one conversation about relocation in the room. You think you would hear that stuff, right? You're in the room with these well, guys. Well, yeah, exactly. That's not what I was curious. It was hot. It was hot, really hot. The deal was, was like, done before oh. that came out. Right. Yeah. You know, when, it, when a deal of that magnitude, if, if, if anything gets leaked, right yeah. now, you've, you're going to have, you're going to have, you know, fans, you know, the, you know, and, and the community try to lobby for it. And, 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 and when you make that decision, no different than Quebec going to Colorado, Winnipeg going to Phoenix, when that decision's made, it's got to be made and it can't be leaked. Right. I, it shocked me. And I, I, I've always kind of, you know, uh, thought of myself as someone that kind of gets gets a little bit of scoop sometimes, right? I know enough people that I hear something a little rumble. I knew nothing, yeah. and I remember nothing. when it happened, I was like, "Holy smokes!" And now they're talking yeah. about going back into that market. Um, they, you know, they it's 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 one of the TV markets that uh, um, they, you know that's in that top five or six in in in, in the U.S. And and in order to secure a big uh, U.S. TV deal, you got to cover all those markets, right? If you don't have an Atlanta and and that region, you know you're like that's why they're in Phoenix. Let's face it, they that yeah. that franchise would have been gone ten years ago if they didn't have the the the, the market share of the of the of the U.S. Uh, um, U.S. TV rights, right? So that's what Batman's doing. Like him or like him or, or or not, he's trying to trying to cash in with a with a you know finally get a u.s contract but seems to be spinning his tires a little bit but uh yeah so so and then now you go to europe okay first uh first stop sweden um what made you think yeah jesse good good question what made you decide to go 
Yeah, that call, Kevin she uh, Shovel Day off called my agent and, and just immediately was talking about two-way contract. That's that's writing on the wall. I got picked up as a waiver wire, so there's zero, like literally zero investment in me uh, outside of what they paid my salary. But um, so that that writing was on the wall. And, I, and after, you know, my last year in the minors, my numbers spoke for themselves. My, I lost my game there. I lost my confidence. I couldn't fathom going back. Like, I really just couldn't. And when yeah. I started getting those calls about two ways, I'm like, been around enough. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's, maybe it was too short sighted, but I, I just, again, could not fathom uh, doing it. So just decided to go to Europe and, and try to pick a league that, you know, a lot of times people talk about my skating and, and what it wasn't up to par or what up, up to liking. And I figured I'd go to, a, you know, a good skating league, which was Sweden and just prove a yep. point kind of that's where my mentality was that I'll, I'll go play my game there. So, um, and then, and be beneficial. Maybe, maybe I could pick up the pace a bit. So I went over there and had a really good year played for Elf Samuelson was the coach. Uh, Marcus Naslin was the general manager. Wow. And Peter yeah. Forsberg was his assistant general manager. So if there was a spot to kind of go and play well and get a shot back in North America, that'd probably be it outside the KHL. And then that was kind of my mentality, my thought process. So, Two things. So um, first one, and, and I totally agree with you, Rob, I'm a skating guy and I watched you, you know, from a young age, right up, you know, to, to you know, through junior in, in, into the NHL and the program. And I heard that too. And people would say, and they said the same thing about David Boland, uh, you know, it, it, everybody skates different, right? It, it, there, there's not a prototypical way to skate. We all have different bodies and, and we yeah. all have different sizes and, and, you know, you can't look at somebody and say that guy can't skate. If you're just a you know a, a casual hockey fan, it, it bothers you. Look at Drysital, you think he's got the ugliest stride in the world. He's right. one of the best hockey players in the world. Right, and and it's about how you you know. I always say, um, you know, I love McDavid and I love his north south game. Um, you know, and he and he does those uh, he does those crossovers and gets going. And he, I'm an east west guy, and that's what you and you and David bread and butter was 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 coming in. And 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 using the East West game, and the East West game is edges, man. That's a skater. Yeah. Anybody can go north south 100 miles an hour. That's fine. But when you got a big 230 pound defenseman going to take your head off, and you can't get out of the way, um, you know your career is not going to last very long. So I I, I actually defended you, um, you know, several times when when you know because well, what happened to Rob? Oh, he couldn't skate. And I'd say bullshit. He couldn't skate. Like I watched him, <laughs> you know, he skated well. Um, bowling, same thing. Oh, you, you, never going to make it. Can't skate. Bullshit. Right. So anyway, but then my next question was, so, um, all these kids, uh, there was, uh, Henrik and yeah. I forget the older boy. Well, who's the, uh, he, they both ended up draft. Um, yeah. I forget the older one, uh, but, uh, they were, must've been just little kids then were they, were they, you know, 12, 13? When you no, were he was, uh, Henrik was, uh, he was 17. He was on my line. Oh, Henry right right there. Oh, wow. Yeah. 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 So he was playing there and he, you know, he stuck it out. I think it was a uh, half, halfway through the season. I think he went over to the U S program or he jumped over to seas to play more uh, set you, you know, U 18 level, but yeah, yeah the beginning we had started out with him. So it was, it, he was a great kid. Yeah. He was, yeah, he was good. But that league was, I mean, it was solid. It was for a 17 year old kid. It was tough. It, it was tough for me. I went over there. I thought I was going to go there from the NHL and just torch it. Like, you know, mentally, yeah. I, I just was confident and I would score 100 points. That was my mentality. And I got there. I had two points in my first 10 games. And I was like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was playing good, but it was like they weren't, it wasn't like back home. Like, you know, in North America, you make one really good pass, you draw duplication of coverage, you make one good pass. It's a very great A. Over there, you could do the same thing. You make your pass. That guy's so far away from the net, that's not a threat to the net. He's got to make another pass. So it's like if you want a point, you really got to look at. You got to make a play where two another pass can be strung together. Maybe two passes can be strung together. Yep. So beating yeah, structures it's a different and animal. Speed was hard. Yeah. So it's I woke me up. <laughs> Forty one points in like fifty games or something like that. I was like, that was like a hell of a season. Really, I, I could. Yeah. You know, by the end of it, I was like, yeah, that actually was good. Usually, you know, again, offensive guy. When you have a big year, you're you're talking one and a half points a year a game, one and a half. You know, around there, but. Yeah, that was it. Was a very tough league, and then the KHL after that. What was the comparison between the Swedish elite and the and the K at that point? Just as way more organized as far as everything off ice, on ice, the way the game was played in Sweden was a lot of structured team play, and it's it's different in the KHL. A lot of individual stuff. Um, 
and it matters the, the budgets really show who's got a you know budgets matter yeah. who's getting paid and, and what kind of players those are compared to your lower you know so it was a very big swings I only played 20 I made it 21 games and uh unfortunately I was the highest one of the highest paid players on the team so they, they gassed me we were last place it was a tough situation Latvia is a you know they don't have a budget like ska and yeah. that year especially was the lockout season so everybody was over there like all the top Russians in the NHL came home and yeah. then NHL guys started coming over and making big bucks and, and playing like big names and stuff. So the league was stacked. It was, it was very stacked. Uh, so we were, we had a tough time in Latvia. We weren't in a high place, obviously towards the bottom, if not the bottom. And then uh, I got let go of my contract. So it was a different experience. You know, that was not, I wouldn't say that was so much of a positive experience. I guess we would just lay it on the, salary and say you know they couldn't afford it they probably could have said that a little bit differently than uh the way they did it but it is what it is it was All frustrating over there, yeah yeah they'll you don't you don't produce uh you know they, they they i've seen it uh and then it's like well i have a contract too bad sue us what are you gonna do right yeah i've seen that over and over happen to me um but if if yeah. if, if were they fighting in that league when, when so so johnny morast he's a buddy of mine and he told me a story yeah. and he was over there and he had to he had to fly home to his uh, his 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 wife was in Rochester, and she was having a yeah. baby, so he had to come he had to he had to fly home and and then two of the tough guys got got kicked out, and he ended up having to go back like twenty four hours after he got to Rochester, and he said that the owner gave him a bag full of money. It was like it was crazy. He said, it, but were they fighting then? Did they have the two or three, you know? lunatics on every team i know that that happened for a few years were you there then yeah no i was there a year after they kind of cleaned it up after that vitez yeah you know shenanigans they were you know they had a huge brawl i know josh grad's a good buddy of mine he was out there yeah. so trevor gillies is a good you know my ex-teammate good buddy so um that was a gong show and then yeah, yeah. that was the year after we had we had uh redis uh redis Ivanis. yeah he's a oh, yeah, he guy top. In LA, so yeah i known him yeah. since i was a kid so it was good to have him on the team i knew him for a long time and he was yeah. also tough as nails he's like six seven two sixty yeah nobody wanted to mess with him so yeah uh but it was clear yeah it wasn't like that it wasn't like you know the old school days uh like the year before and previous that one team yeah. was bringing in two three goons it just <laughs> yeah. oh just yeah, and paying them the goons were making more than the skilled players yeah yeah no. what was going on no. right it was got crazy. a market yeah <laughs> Austria. Then you, you end up in Austria, and uh, you know what? What? What kind of? Obviously, you you leave leave the K. Did you go to Austria that same year, or was it the next year? Yeah, I had to go. I mean, I had no choice. So it's really a really bizarre decline, so to speak. You go from the KHL, you usually drop down to Switzerland or sweet, you know, kind of a league. But that was a lockout year, so I got fired in November, and everybody was over there still. Like Switzerland teams were. Love to have you, but we have Joe Thornton, Tyler Sagan, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there yeah. was four top NHL players on every Swiss team and you only got four imports. So uh, I kind of really, in a player like my position, it drove down the market. I couldn't get jobs that were, you know, kind of to my resume. And right. uh, everybody was telling me I'd have to wait until these guys would be out of, you know, they'd be back. In Just America. bad luck. <laughs> Just it was really bad, bad timing, bad luck. You know, I had a two-year deal in Latvia, so it would have been nice to stick that out, but it didn't, it didn't work out. And then at the, again, that time it was horrible. So I wound up signing in Austria with Salzburg, you know, Red Bull, great things about the organization. I heard of great things and felt confident going there. It's just that, again, it was dropping down that many leagues was tough, but what are you going to do? I wasn't going to go sit and watch hockey and, you know, Sw Sweden and Switzerland to wait for my chance yeah. to get in the lineup. I didn't, I didn't think that I was that bad at hockey um, at the time. So to had to find somewhere to play and that, that seemed like a good fit for, you know, yep. three, four months of the season. And then you go to Switzerland. Um, and that's, I've always said, you know, Sweden, Switzerland, Finland, that those are the, and then the, the, to, to a lesser extent, the, the German league, but you know, there's the Swiss, Swiss hockey is real good hockey. I mean, that's yep. a high level. It's always well coached, well structured, uh, well yep. supported. What, what was your experience like in Sweden? You were there twice, right? Yeah, no, it's definitely really well organized, a lot better than, than I imagined. Uh, fast, super fast game. It's fast, you know, everything it's intense and transition. The transition is really fast. Uh, the puck moves like crazy. So it's, it's, you know, pretty, 
pretty wide open. It's not to- too physical of a league. There can be some derby games that get out of hand, but nothing like, you know, nothing like we're used to seeing. We're not talking about five guys killing each other on the ice stuff. Right. We're just talking you know, four or five big hits in the game. So definitely a lot. Uh, app- it's definitely appetizing as a, as a guy coming from North America where you have that, you know, grueling schedule, especially the minor oh, yeah. league schedule. Um, you know, we finished my three years there. We've every year we finished with 16 games and 29 nights yeah. in the minor. So yeah. we never have that. I remember the coach at the time saying, <laughs> rest up we got a big month big month of games so i'm like how many games we got he's like nine yeah and we used to play nine in a week and a half <laughs> so yeah. like, this is nothing. Yeah. like yeah great Crazy. so anyways so but yeah different then you end up back in and in between your second stint in sweden and your second stint in switzerland you played a few games with Portland in the in the American yeah. League, and I remember that. And I and I I, I I was remember watching closely because Boland ended up there too. He was rehabbing his ankle, and you guys yeah. ended up back because he was signed with Florida at the time. Were you um, were you given a, a, a realistic shot uh, with the Panthers? Like, did they put you there to kind of see where 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 Rob Shrimp was at this point of his career and and looking at signing you? Or you know, what? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, that was bizarre. I just had a. I was skating. Actually, I was living in Naples, and uh, David was obviously over in, in Boca. And then yep. a couple of weeks before camp started, I he, he said they were going to start skating. I said I'm, I'm going to come. So I used to drive every morning about six o'clock in the morning. They'd leave, get over there, show up, and skate with the guys. And then we'd scrimmage, and I, you know I was doing really what I, I mean. I'm, it's, not, it's summer scrimmages, but still I was showcasing my skills and scoring goals on Luongo and stuff like that. And the coach or uh, Dale Talon was like, kind of just took notice, and then you know he just asked what I was up to and what I wanted to do, kind of thing. So I was, I was hoping to get uh, just an invite out to training camp, NHL training camp out of that, which would have been nice. But um, I got uh, an invitation to the Portland Pirates training camp and I went down there on a PTO and played my way on obviously to a contract. And then, you know, it was kind of said that if I played well enough that I could, you know, possibly be with the big club, but my contract was a one-way HL. So it was really restricting. <laughs> that was the only thing I asked for. It wasn't about money. Uh, it's just about the opportunity to, to have a chance to play my way up. But, um, I was grateful for the you know chance to come back to the States, play in the A even. Uh, at that time, I played in Europe enough, and it's, it, it wasn't really that smooth. You know, you get the, I got fired in, you know, the KHL. Then my last year in Sweden, I just, it just didn't work out really well the way that it was yeah. planned. So it's good yeah, to come Dale, home. Dale's a, Dale's a pretty, has a pretty good uh, reputation of being a good guy and, you know, giving guys opportunities for sure. So. Yeah. Yeah, so that was great. Then Switzerland, uh, and then Germany. What, what, what? How did you like Germany? I was there for uh, like three three months. So we were in the. Uh, I was playing the Swiss league in Langnau, and then it was new coach came in like ten games in the season. Um, so it was you know, towards the end of the year, he told me, you know, really want to focus on the young guys, sort of thing. And Danny Sivret and Brandon Pruss were over in Germany in uh, Nuremberg. <laughs> And I was told that basically the last 10 games of the season, I was only going to play one or two of them. So I figured, you know what, I had on a one-year deal. I got to can't sit in the stands. So I asked for my release to go play with Nuremberg and, and try to team up with Prusty and Sivy and, and uh, try to win a championship. So that's how I kind of popped over there and, and had a, you know, a little short stint and they played 10 games in Germany and then the playoffs. I had a really good playoffs that year though. So that was good. Um, it was fun. It was great. You know, the league, the hockey really was uh, pleasantly surprising, you know, presently, uh, pleasantly surprising as, as far as being good. Our, uh, we had two guys in our team. I can't say his name, probably Ailes a- and um, Reimer. These two guys were our best players on the team. It wasn't even the imports. These guys were sick, like really yeah. good hockey players. So I was very surprised at the level. And, you know, they almost won the, the Olympics in 2008. They should have won the Olympics in 2018, really. Uh, absolutely power play with under two minutes left a block shot Russia scores right like I know. technically I know it would have could have should us but like they played well enough they sh- probably should have won the gold medal absolutely um, I was rooting well. for them for sure um, that's a big sign of their development right like that's no NHL guys but they're locals and that's what it, it speaks yeah. to that level and their development well and look who they're spitting out now right Timmy Stutzla or to you know yeah. uh, you know Edmonton um uh Dry, <laughs> dry. Yeah. Uh, um, so you just mentioned a guy, and I and I meant to talk about him earlier when we were talking about London. Dan Savrat. 
so uh, w- watching as a hockey guy and you know i'm obviously you know a better part of 20 years older than you guys so you know i was watching it you know as a as a as a grown man in my 30s or 40s or whatever when you're playing your he's one of the nicest smoothest defensemen i had ever seen at any level um he, i don't think i ever saw him make a bad play uh he would he was i i thought he was a great leader I, he, why didn't what happened with him I, I really was it injuries or you know what happened with that guy because I really pulled, I really thought that guy was going to be a superstar in the National Hockey League I really did oh do we lose him yeah it looks like he uh, may have cut out there uh, we still gotta he'll come back um yeah we'll just uh you know let's talk a little bit before uh Rob comes back and join us. We have just a couple more minutes uh, with him and uh, and a couple things to discuss. But um, what do you think of the Leaf, Leaf game last night? Did you watch any of that, or were you or were you dying in bed? I know you've been sick for a few days. Oh, Shrimpy's back. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. Just kick me out. Yeah. No, I was. I, what I was saying, Rob, was dance of rat. Um, I I I thought he was going to have a career. I thought he was a tremendous. Maybe he didn't make a bad decision. He always got the puck to where it needed to be. Uh, good offensively, good defensively. You know, everybody that talked about that guy like he was just a tremendous leader, good guy. What happened to his career, in your opinion? A little bit of the same of mine. Ran into the, kind of the same hurdle, you know. Uh, ran into a team that didn't really see what his um, upsides were, His, you know, yeah. his what the things that he brought and try to make, you know, different player out or make a player that they wanted more than, than what they had. And, and yeah. tier, I would get to play with them. So totally biased, but man, he was brilliant. He knew how to shot block down on two knees. He would eat pucks in his chest, but I always ask him like, man, you're nuts. Like what the hell are you doing? He's like, man, mathematically from the trajectory would take like an absolute, you know, shank from this guy to hit me in the face. So hopefully he doesn't do that. So he had the balls to do it and also the knowledge how to do it. Yeah. And then quarterback power play from the point, um, I thought he was really such a good player, but that's, that's the thing you've run into that hurdle. They, you know, make you start doubting yourself, uh, not believing in the player and, that you are. And, All it takes you know, is one guy. <laughs> well, that's, that's it. You know, they wind no. up making up, they made up, you know, they made different players. They, they kind of created NHL players that they wanted to there. So, you know, like Peckham took over a Civi spot. They're not in the same category. He was in People Philly, Peckham, wasn't he? Was he Philly? Uh, Civi was with the Oilers and then he was with Philly. Yeah. Yeah, so I remember him at Philly. Yeah, I, I, you know what? I loved him, loved him as a player, and uh, you know, says a lot when he was a, he wore the C on that with that group, right? That's a <laughs> and he led by example. He scored twenty three goals. He had a ton of goals. He was sick, and yeah. his plus he was plus like sixty seven. It's like yeah, insanity. You know, that's no fluke either. Smart, really good yeah. decision. So, um, CZ what's he doing now? What's he doing now? He's doing uh, in his full time gig. He's he's doing uh, wealth management. He got his own okay. thing going on, and he works with London Life, I believe. And then okay. uh, he coaches the U16 AAA London Knight Junior Knights. Oh wow, good for so him! They're in the playoffs right now. Actually, he's playing right now. Uh, they're in the finals of that. So he's got like three or four guys that are top top uh, first round eligible, well, first round ranked draft picks. Well, that's great. Good. Hopefully, he you know stays in the game because a guy like that, you know, just like yourself, can 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 really help the next generation come up just based on the experiences and and what you guys you know you know saw and and whatnot got a couple couple quick so you, you retired in austria um i want to talk about what you're doing now but i got a couple quick rapid fire uh questions for you um and then and then i'd like to you know uh talk about what you're doing so um this is a tough one you don't have to answer it because it's a tough one i but I, I always like to say best teammate ever any level As a teammate, any level. Oh, that's tough. That's that's really tough. Danny Richmond. Don't answer it. Danny Richmond. Yeah. Yeah. He was a Danny good player awesome. too. Yeah, Danny was awesome. He's a great guy. So a great teammate. Loved it. He knew. Yeah. Yeah. He's everything you can. Yeah. He's a great guy. Yeah. Hockey background. His dad's been scouting the NHL for years, so really yeah. gets it. You know what I mean? And uh, hell of a player as well. So Absolutely. Richie was awesome. Yeah. I biggest beauty. Last. Biggest beauty you ever played with. Biggest beauty, probably, probably Brandon Prust. I was gonna, I was gonna say Prusty. I remember one of Boland's uh, golf tournaments. We were on the bus coming from 
Angus Glen or wherever the tournament was back down to, yeah, yeah. to Toronto and Prust. Were you on the bus with us? Pr Prusty. No, I showed up there with my girlfriend and not my wife, but I showed up late. So yeah, yeah. Prusty was and then and then uh, um you know, God rest his soul. Um goalie. I, I'm bad with I'm getting old here. A goalie that passed away and drowned, a good buddy of David's. He played oh, Ray Emery. Played. Ray Emery. Emery and Emery, Emery left his Lambo or something like that, and the uh, and and somebody from the golf course drove it drove it downtown and met us. No like, oh yeah, 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 that was that day. That was fun. So yeah, not not surprised there. Um, who do you like this year? Who's going to win the Stanley Cup in Rob Shrimp's eyes? I like. I mean, I really like Vegas. Vegas or Dallas from the from the West. I don't know. They're they're solid. They're playing really solid hockey. I like Vegas with Quick Jonathan Quick being like uh, fired oh. up right now. You know? Yeah, kind of a pissed off Jonathan Quick who's really talented and it's a very good back end for them. And then obviously Dallas is really deep. They're playing well together. Like, you know, Sagan and Ben are kind of turning it back on a little bit. Robertson's yeah. sneaky sick. Pavelski's yeah. still doing it. Uh, there's a lot of pieces of that pie there that are that puzzle that are looking good. So. I like them a lot. And I, I think the Rangers from the East are starting to really start to, you know, pick it up and roll and click. Even, uh, you know, you add Kaner into the mix, that's a totally different recipe, Ooh. right? So, yeah, took those guys a little bit to figure it out, but they're rolling now. And you got Lafreniere starting to pick it up and score. Like, you know, everybody's picking it up. Their back end's pretty sick. You got Miller, Fox. You got that lingering guy is real solid. Their back end's good. And then the goaltender. So, they, yep. they, they're they pretty solid. You know, I think I like their their core guys. And they can play a physical game with Truba. You know, Truba, Miller, these guys, they, they play that game. Oof. And then you got your firepower with, you know, go down the list right oh. there. You got yeah, Aaron, crazy. Smith, crazy. Uh, the weapons that they have, they can throw. Yeah. Triders are net front guy, which in playoffs is huge, right? Your net front guy is massive in the playoffs. So that's when Buff was that one year. Remember, they put him up at forward against, I think it was Vancouver. They started that, or Philly. He went up pounding Pronger into the wall. Like, that was a statement. But Buff was that net front presence, which – yeah, you know it's huge. He played on David's line. At one yeah. point, it was Buff, Bufflin, Boland, and Kane. Pat Kane. Yeah, were on the yeah. third line, and they were playing. They had to play against the Sedins in the Vancouver series. They played against the Thornton line with Marlow in the San Jose yeah. series, and then they got Giroux and uh, whoever was with him, and they outscored them. You know, yeah. so you know sick. that's you're, you're right. You know, you got to have depth up and down the lineup. Uh, um, but yeah, the, the, the East pretty powerful right now. Um, there's a lot of teams I think that could come out the little bit of the Toronto, uh, uh Tampa game last night, Perry, got, Perry, got, Perry was Perry. He went after a couple guys and, <laughs> and getting them worked up, but, uh, perfect. Yeah. That's, you know, going into the playoffs, that's what you have to do. Right. Um, yeah. so, so now you're, you're living in Latvia, um, space force hockey. And I love the name. Um, I know we've discussed this before. Tell us a little bit about it. So, so you know, uh, it's an online community where you're 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 kind of kind of you know putting a development package together, you know, globally, really. Um, you know, with the, that's the beauty of the online. So, tell us about that. Yeah, so it's you know online community. So the, you know, players come in there and learn sort of as, as a community. If there's any questions they can ask. There's you know, inside of uh, inside of the community again. It's like that peer to peer learning. If they got questions, they can ask each other. A kid that's at you know, use 16 AAA, can ask someone else a question? So it makes it dynamic in that way. And then for my side of it, uploading content in there for the kids to, to learn, like it's learning content. It's not, uh, you know, so I do teach how to pick up the puck, but that's something everybody wants to learn right now with the Michigan coming in hot and everybody wanting to do it. So putting in the content there where the, the stuff that I put in, I know they're going to learn it, whether it's shooting technique, you know, your shaft angles, your you know weight transfers, your snaps, all that stuff, walking it through, teaching how to shoot, passing, and then a bunch of hockey IQ stuff. So taking clips, learning clips, I'll diagram them and teach, you know, the, you know, the reason why these things are successful. So a lot of kids watch the highlights and they try to go out and emulate it, which is great. But I, I like to teach it and to kind of show them all the information, why it works, how to do it, and then what to look for. So that's they understand it and then they can go and execute it versus, again, trying to just imitate a, a move from the highlights the night before, so to speak. Yeah, for sure. I think there's a tremendous market in there for it. How do you how, how do you how do you sign up? Is there a web page? Is there a welcome? Uh, you know, if anybody wants to 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 look it up, is there? How would you go about doing that? Yep, it's on uh, www.spaceforcehockey.com. 
So you go through there and it's really uh, walks you right through the steps. It's very easy. Uh, it's very cheap as well. I think I know it buys, but two, it's less than a stick, 200 bucks for a membership. And that gives you access to the community, access to the videos and the content, and then the ability to, to ask questions and again, open it up. So for, for hockey stuff, it's hard to you know do scale stuff. You can really only, if you're in one place, you can only work with maybe 10, 15 guys where again, with this community setting online, COVID kind of showed us what that's like, you know, doing zooms and um, doing clips for players and that sort of thing. So, um, and doing it online, than, and what's that? Le- less than an hour of ice in most places. Two hours. Yes. About, about, about a half a half a hockey stick for a twelve-year-old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? I'll yeah. teach you how to. I'll teach you how to use the stick. So. Well, and the thing about it is, and it's funny, you're you're kind of a uh, you know ahead of your time here. Um, you, if you if you if you, if you look right now, you got this Bedard kid, and I watched him here at the World Juniors in Halifax. He's dynamic. Um, yeah. He shoots the puck real well uh you know changing his angles people people have been talking about uh matthews in toronto since he came into the league the way he changes his angle and the way he you know you've been doing that for 36 years right um and now now you know with the opportunity um you know to mentor and 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 have this online community i think it's a, a tremendous thing and i would suggest and and encourage anybody that uh uh, you know, have a, has a kid playing hockey to get out there and, 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 you know, check this out, learn from the best. I love it. I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll be uh, signing up for my boy for sure. And then the other thing you're doing here is shrimp consulting. Tell me about that. Yeah. I work with teams, power plays. So when they struggle in power play, watch their film, break it down give them the kind of ins and outs of what the, you know, what the problems are and how to fix it. So um, that, I love doing that consulting side of things and helping teams out. I've done it with a couple of major junior teams and the success was really great. So just again, making those clips, showing them where the pain points are, some suggestions on where to kind of what kind of setups to go with, and then having a consult with the coach and break it down so they can present it to the team. Or I also offer it where if you have your five power play guys or 10 power play guys, two units, having a video Zoom uh, session with them going through the positions, the decisions they make, what makes sense, what doesn't kind of thing. Uh, yeah. Power play was my specialty for, for, I mean, pretty much since junior, right? Um, so I've, you know, that's why I got hired the last 10 years of my career. So it was always power yeah. play and probably, you know, limited or, you know, just your average five on five shift. So power play is yeah. really important. And I think it's, um, somewhere again, if I, that's, a, I know that's an area I can get back to the game in helping guys understand the positions, uh, very well. And, and sort of the chess match that goes behind a power play and, and how to break down a PK. And, um, some coaches don't have that and it's, I'm happy to do that, you know, on a consultant basis and, and show them you know, what that looks like. A lot of times in my career, it was always like the coach would give it to the assistant coach, like, here, you deal with the power play. And I always never think it like, this is the most important thing. We always talk about it. Like our PP was shit and the PK didn't execute, whatever. And it, the game gets blamed on those. But the amount of time that we put into it and resources, I think it, it could be much higher to, to have a better understanding of that. So that's what I offer and, and just some support there for teams. That's awesome, man. And, and you know, I, I can't thank you enough for taking the time here tonight and come out uh, i know uh um, you know i'm thrilled to have you and and the and the you know the listeners are as well brent any final thoughts uh for rob uh no not really again thanks for coming on we uh really enjoyed talking to you and uh best of luck with everything you're doing and uh what you're doing now yeah let me know uh you you know we'd love love to have you anytime and um you know we'll when you're around uh you know certainly touch base and uh you know, really have a safe trip back home and I wish you, wish you nothing but success in your ventures. And, and a lot of people, uh, you know, be better hockey players for, uh, for tuning in and listening. Thanks again, Thank Rob. You. Okay. Thanks guys. Yeah. Okay, folks. Uh, that's it for tonight. We got a, we got a, uh, playoff preview special next Monday night. And, uh, um, that's going to be fun. We're going to break down the different matchups, uh, you know, in the national hockey league, we'll have the, the playoff match, matchups by then make some predictions, uh, that we get can a bracket up other. and going. Yeah. Yeah. We'll do some, do some of that. Uh, any final thoughts, uh, here, uh, Clem? No, I think we covered most of it. Uh, obviously this is going to be our last guest until probably the end of playoffs at least. Yeah. Um, and then in the off season, we'll probably pick that back up again, get some guys on pardon me and uh hopefully get some more content out there for you guys later this week i didn't have any (laughs) any ability to get anything out this week i was laying in bed sick all week yeah and he well what a great guest eh? yeah journey and and you know what i liked 
you know, he, he's just brutally honest. He, he, uh, you know, he talked about the highs and the lows and, and, um, you know, I think he's, he's, he's comfortable with, with his journey and, and, and he's, he's, uh, he's given back, man. And, and I'm telling you that there's a guy that can, can his knowledge and, 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 you know, what he was able to do in the game, I think will help any young, young player. So yeah. And it was cool to pick his brain about some of that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. I'll have a good week. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see you next week, folks.